Hey everyone, Matthew Reinhardt here, guided tour time through my most popular and probably one of my most favorite uh, books that I've ever created. Don't tell the other books. Star Wars, A Pop-Up Guide to the Galaxy. This book came out in 2007 and it was a New York Times bestseller for several weeks, which is great, and uh, especially for a pop-up book. And here it is. Let's open it up to spread one. This is an ad at the Imperial Walker from the Empire Strikes Back. And I knew that this was the way that I wanted to open up my book because those ad ads were so, uh, they made such an impression on me when I was a, a kid watching the movie Empire Strikes Back. There's Luke Skywalker there. And all this artwork was made from cut paper collage. So you can, everything was cut out and glued um, together and then scanned into the computer to, to compile all this art. So it was just an incredible amount of work. There's paper everywhere in my studio. Um, on the sides, we have some little pops here. This is Lars Homestead. This is where Luke grew up. And you can see Uncle Owen there fixing a um, moisture evaporator. And there's Luke, you know, with his with his land speeder. And, and there's uh, Aunt Beru there. She's getting ready to offer him some blue milk. So there were hundreds of pieces of artwork that went into making this, as well as like the hundreds of pieces of, uh, of each of the, you know, all the different pops, all those different pieces that go together to make this book. So it was an incredible, it was so hard to do. So you can, I love doing these window pops where you can sort of see the pop flat and then when it opens, you know, it, it blows up. So that, you know, you can see the window, you can see Alderaan, they're all peaceful and nice there. And then when you open up the pop, you know, it explodes and there's the Death Star um, blowing it up. Um, this uh, the, here is um, this is Bespin um, uh, Cloud City, and I've even included some twin plied cloud cars in there, and uh, it gets really, really tall and long. This book taught me a lot of things that I had never done before. So, um, uh, you know, I, even though it was really, really difficult, um, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it, it was a, a happy, horrible time if it makes any sense to anybody. Here is a, this, the, this scene from Return of the Jedi, this is a speeder bike, uh, the speeder bike chase from uh, Empire Strikes, no, Return of the Jedi. And um, I love biker scouts, are my favorite uh, Imperial Stormtroopers. So um, I used to like mimic those, those speeder bikes all the time on my own bike and uh, didn't go quite as fast. Next spread is about all the different, the diversity of the galaxy. So, you know, all the different life forms, whether they're um, sentient life forms like aliens, um, you can see all the different, you know, uh, sentient beings of the galaxy. And you can even see um, humans are, are even uh, included in there. And if, if you look at that human closely enough, it might look like a, a certain pop-up book maker and author. This main pop, though, was really tough. This Rancor monster, there's a Gamorrean guard in his hand. His arms are swinging everywhere. And there's a lot of really interesting sort of mechanics going into making those arms swing. Here's a little Jawa here. Uh, I think I built this over, and like, you must have built it like 10 times over, just those, those little pops, just to get them right. Chewbacca was really tough making that artwork. Um, for his face because, you know, it takes a long time to get, you know, the likeness of just his eyes and all these little characters here from Bib Fortuna, Wicked the Ewok, you know, it takes, a, it, it, making the artwork from the cut paper collage and getting it just right, at least to me, um, it, it took a long time and making them all fit within that, so there's like pops within pops within pops. This book is insane. Um, uh, I also love like all the other creatures within the Star Wars universe, like this Tauntaun here, which was really cool, one of my favorite scenes. And this little mini pop of the Wampa that looks like it's about to attack the, ta the, the Tauntaun. And there's even like this, this uh, curly-tailed uh, Minoc, which attacked the Millennium Falcon in Empire Strikes Back. Really cool. And I love this Bantha. Um, this Bantha is from uh, A New Hope. And um, I love the curls on its horns. That was a really, uh, I got to use curls more often. Okay, spread three. It's the technology and spaceships of the Star Wars universe, and it's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, the Millennium Falcon. So I had to make all the, you know, this pop-up was hard because, uh, you know, you want to have some mass to that vehicle, and that pod on the side was really tough to, to sort of pop open. Then on the sides, there are all these little mini pops of other vehicles. Um, they're obviously not in scale. There's a, a Imperial Star Destroyer with a, a Tantive IV uh, on the side. I hope I got that pronounced right. right. But that's uh, Princess Leia's counselor ship. And then also a uh, TIE Fighter and um, an X-Wing um, in the trenches of the Death Star. And I tried to include also, if I couldn't make a pop of a, a spaceship I really liked, um, I also included it like as flat art. So I made all these little tiny illustrations like of the Slave One, of of the Y-Wing fighter and, you know, along with making the pops of like some of my favorites like the Shuttle Tidarian from um, Return of the Jedi. 
And one more of my favorite uh, vehicles is the um, Scout Walker, just because it was just such an odd, skinny, weird thing. So but instead of including it on the Endor page, I actually included it on the, the uh, Hoth uh, environment. Spread 3 is uh, the Cantina, like one of the most iconic scenes from all of the Star Wars movies. I mean, it just like, it kind of, it is Star Wars, you know what I mean? So I tried to recreate like what it was like to be inside and where all the different characters were from Han Solo to, you know, Chewbacca, you know, Luke and Obi-Wan, even some of the side characters like these two Duras guys um, in Pondo Baba and Dr. Avazan who uh, end up accosting Luke and, and Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan takes care of Dr. Avazan uh, and also uh, Ponda. There's a uh, Muff Tack and also Greedo getting ready, getting you know, he's trying to uh, get himself uh, psyched up to go uh, take on Han Solo. There's even the Figured Down and the Modal Nodes, the band in the cantina. So here's a little pop of Han Solo. And what I wanted a double sort of pop up this. So first it's Han, and then you open up another side pop, and that, that pop up actually uh, causes the, the carbonite to go up over the Han Solo pop up. So it's like one pop up affecting another pop up. And that was really important for me to do. And then, of course, there's Boba Fett on the side as well. And then, you know, other pop-ups like coming in all directions. So there's um, uh, Lando Calrissian uh, who ends up uh, redeeming himself by going to rescue Luke from the vile clutches of Jabba the Hutt. Jabba is my favorite character. He and C-3PO are my two favorite characters in Star Wars, I think. And Princess Leia, too. But, um, so I, I really, it was important for me to make a really cool Jabba the Hutt pop-up, and there he is getting ready to eat something, and he's got all his characters all around from the Salacious Crumb to Ula, and there's even the Sice Noodles and Max Rebo band in the back, you know, doing their song Lap to Neck, which is one of my favorites there is the Salacious Crumb and Ula. So all this, like, like I said, all this artwork, we had to make special papers in the studio. So, um, uh, and then I cut that up very carefully. This is IG-88 Embossed, two of my favorite bounty hunters. Next to, of course, Boba Fett. This pop-up of C-3PO and R2-D2 on the fourth spread, I'll be honest with you, it never works as well as it should. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes. You know, sometimes the pop-ups just don't pop up the way you want them to in, in production. So um, it's really kind of frustrating because in, in, in my uh, prototypes that I made, they always, you know, opened up much more. But sometimes when they're in manufacturing and, the, you know, there are hundreds of other hands that are helping to build it, they don't quite make it as well as you do. So, uh, but, but still, we got to use foil on this, these two. It's a really hard pop, and I figured out how to make these a lot better now, but they still look pretty good, and the foil and everything looks great on them. Um, so, like I said earlier, Princess Leia is one of my favorite characters, and I always love that scene where she pulls off her helmet, or her, her hood, and reveals herself um, in uh, the first Star Wars movie, so I wanted to recreate that with this pop-up. And also include other characters like, oh, well, it's a trap, you know, uh, Admiral Akbar. Um, another one of my favorite Rebel characters, as well as Wedge Antilles that was just shown before. And there's even a miniature pop-up of Mon Mothma, because in that first trilogy, there's really not a lot of female characters, and I wanted to you know, show that there were more female characters in, in the trilogy. Um, and then also uh, get to showcase some Imperial characters, um, and there's some flat art with uh, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, and then, of course, this pop-up of some of my favorite Imperial troopers and um, other characters. All right, now this is the final spread, and this pop-up of Darth Vader's helmet really was the thing that kicked off the entire book because I had to, I, I didn't think I would be able to do the book until I could make this helmet. And so I was doing it for a long time before I was even contracted to do the Star Wars book, and I wanted to make it so that the mask kind of pulled up over uh, Anakin's face. So you can see his face for a few seconds. There's uh, Emperor Palpatine shooting some um, electricity from his hands, force, force lightning from his hands, excuse me. There's uh, Yoda. He's raising a, um, an X-Wing from the uh, bogs of Dagobah. And these two pops with the light up lightsabers. Now this was something different that we had never done before. And um, uh, uh, it was kind of incredible to be able to make happen. Um, so there's one side that's Luke, and you can see it's another one of those window pops where you can see what the pop-up looks like flat, and then when you open it, he changes, and he goes from being young Luke to older Luke. And this other side, there, it lights up red, and there's Luke, uh, uh, Darth Vader across the page. So that was really, you know, a cool thing about making this book. This is the limited edition pop. 
Now this is only for um, a, a few hundred people who purchased a limited edition and it's signed and numbered. This is, the, again, my favorite characters um, from Jabba's Palace were the Max Rebo band. That's Sice Noodles. Uh, the blue guy in the middle is Max Rebo. And um, uh, the guy playing the, the horn on the end is uh, Jubu McCool. And so this is only in that limited edition pop-up and it goes into a pop-up that's on the cover of that version of Star Wars, A Pop-Up Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks for joining me today um, in uh, this guided tour of one of my favorite pop-ups. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have anything to say and you want me to do some other you know, video in the future, another guided tour, leave a comment. Let me know. See you later and keep on popping.